without anesthetic and although that looks like there's a little blood there, it's actually no blood dripping from the patient's mouth because it cauterizes it or it heats the tissue so hot that the bleeding stops because the blood vessels are kind of sealed. So now you can see the gums are a little lower on that tooth, but that tooth is much more stable without that constant pull on it than it would have been for another few years with that. Oral surgery is a question we had before um, about specializing in, in different aspects. You think of oral surgeons a lot actually with wisdom teeth removal. They are specialists at getting challenging teeth out of the mouth. Um, I get a question a lot from patients your age about do my wisdom teeth need to come out? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, it all depends on the patient. But they do a lot of wisdom teeth removal. Other things they do though, jaw surgeries like we talked about if someone has a jaw that needs to be repositioned, or implants. So what this is, is say a patient took a hockey puck to the face, kind of like one of those examples we showed you, and a tooth got knocked out, couldn't be replaced. What do you do to replace it? Well, some people can use that little thing that comes in and out, but you may not want something that comes in and out of your mouth. You may want it to be stable. So this is a titanium device that goes into the bone and stabilizes in there. Like if you've heard of someone getting a hip replaced or a knee replaced, it's the same material, same process, but obviously a much smaller scale. And then you put a cap on top of it to make it look like a natural tooth. There's a lot of different aspects of dentistry we can get into, but as we're running out of time, I want to show you some kind of cool cases, right? So these aren't our cases, but another aspect of dentistry is screening the mouth for oral conditions. So these are a couple different examples of that scary seaweed cancer. If this kind of stuff gets caught early, it's got a very good prognosis, but again, another benefit of seeing the dentist because we want to catch that stuff early. Here are a couple cases that I saw. So this gentleman was... Um, an immigrant from another country, and in his home country, there was a very high prevalence of a type of chewing tobacco called, um, I think it's called bet betel nut, betel nut. Um, and I don't know the exact scientific term for it, but he would put that right in front of his gums, and over time, it did cause his gums to recede all the way down. Those, believe it or not, are completely normal. Although they look crazy, they're called tori, and they're just normal bony growths that about 50 to 60 percent of the population have on either the top or the bottom. Those are just the biggest ones I've ever seen. So I was like, can I take a picture of these? Because those are pretty cool. And then this bottom one looks super scary. And if you think back to the last slide we showed you, it looks pretty darn similar, right? But believe it or not, this is what's called an irritation fibroma or something that developed from the patient constantly biting their lip. So she bit her lip once. It kind of swelled up. She bit her lip again, and then she just kept chewing on it. And this weird appearance that you see here is actually a scab. It's trying to scab, like if you have a scab on your knee and you go into the shower or the swimming pool, it kind of gets that white appearance. That's the same thing that's going on here. So we were able to remove that and her lip was just fine. So prosthodontics is basically complex dentistry. This is a patient that I saw down in Madison and what happened is she had braces on and unfortunately went through about a depression wasn't taking care of herself, wasn't taking care of her teeth, never brushed for about two and a half years, and her teeth got to the point where they just had cavities everywhere. And so working through this case was challenging. I'll show you the first aspect of it. So what we did is we got her something to put over the top of those little stumps so she could go out and smile. She was 23 at the time. Um, one of my favorite patients. But Katie was a trooper. We got that appliance just to sit over the top. And so this kind of looks like she's going through Invisalign. If you look at it, you kind of see a little mini tray, but it holds this kind of tooth structure, the colors were changed obviously, but that kind of tooth structure in place so when she goes out and hangs out with her friends, she's looking a little bit different than smiling like that. Another case of prosthodontics, so this is that young gentleman that we showed the pictures of where his bone was starting to recede away. You can see this tooth is one of the ones that was totally loose. It's shifted on the side because it just isn't stabilized in the bone. So how can dentists help with that? Well, what dentists can do is we ended up unfortunately having to extract that tooth, but what you notice is the two teeth surrounding that space are a little bit smaller now. What we did is we went kind of around those teeth to get them ready for a new crown. In this case, we did a bridge, and by the time he walked out the door, he had a temporary bridge that day that we ended up transitioning to a permanent one after we got his molds down. But obviously he came in because of his concern of his tooth turning, not knowing that that tooth was... was going to come out, and we ended up getting him the result that he was super happy with because he's like, I haven't smiled for years, I'm able to go home and smile now. 
So I want to talk a little bit about my typical day. So my typical day, like I said, I work four days a week from 7 a.m. to about 5 p.m., so 40 hours a week. I have Fridays off, which is awesome. Like I said, it allows me to spend a lot of time with my family doing things that I like to do. Um, we see about 15 to 20 of our own patients every day, so fillings, crowns, that kind of stuff. But then we also see hygiene checks every day. So I probably see 20 to 30 hygiene checks every day. Meaning when you come in for your cleanings, I'll check your teeth, make sure we don't see any cavities, check your x-rays. So in total, I'm probably seeing 50-ish people a day, which is awesome. Because that's, like I said from the beginning, why I got into it is just interacting with people, getting to meet people. It's an exciting place to be. And I just want to run through some of these cool cases that Dr. Aaron's done because they're awesome to see. I know you guys got to get out of here. But these are just more complex cases, usually of acid reflux, so um, heartburn mixed with a little bit of grinding and punching. And so you can see how big of a difference these make in these people's lives from the day to day, how they smile, how different, how much younger they look. And these are the cool kinds of things that just general dentists can do. So if anyone has any questions or ever wants to stop by the office, one of the requirements we talked about yeah. yeah, he's actually doing my house right now too. Really? <laughs> really good. So if anyone has any questions, oh, please feel free to write down my, my email. Um, my email is my last name, first name at gmail.com. If you guys want to get into dentistry as you go through undergrad, you will need like shadowing hours. Being able to stop by the office, just come in, give us a call, we'll have you guys stop by anytime. Um, Aaron and I are both so we'll all of you guys following us around and kind of seeing some of this stuff in real life. If anyone has any questions, I know you got to get out of here, so feel free to come up to the front. And I guess we'll do the first round of bouncy balls! Thank you. Oh my god, that could be a thing because it lets the chip get both of them. Okay, so it's hard to overbleach. Because the, the type of bleach you would need to be able to do that, you would have to get like a high grade stuff. I can only come from a dentist. So as long as you're a dentist, um, it's pretty hard to do. But you shouldn't ever wear away your enamel. Um, 